Hello, hello, everyone. Amanda Grace coming to you with an urgent live in my robe, my PJs, and my fuzzy slippers. Uh, this is just like on the fly, feeling the presence of the Lord and jumping on in my PJs. This is as real and as raw as it gets. Welcome to everybody watching in the United States and around the world and our Ark of Grace team. Thank you for helping us do what we do for the Lord. Hello, everybody. Hello to those in Texas and Colorado, Maine, Illinois. There's so many of you jumping on. Scotland, hello to our friends across the pond in Scotland. Welcome. Uh, Sadie, that is her tail because all the animals when I flew down here ran in also. So welcome to everybody coming on. Uh, and we're going to open up in prayer and then we're going to get into what we're going to get into right now. So father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Lord, we come before you, father. We praise you, Lord. You are almighty God. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality and might. Father God, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise due your precious holy name. Lord, we ask you, forgive us of our sins, Father. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Lord. Forgive us, Father, of every area we fall short. We fall, fall, we fall so incredibly short of your glory. Father, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that the pull of the flesh becomes less in our lives. So you, your will, and your power become more in our lives. We acknowledge you sent your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, to the earth, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was the Passover lamb, the sacrifice for our sins. He willingly died at Calvary. He purchased us by the shedding of his blood. We were bought with the highest price, the blood of Jesus. He redeemed us. He made an open show and spectacle of the enemy before all of creation when he said it is finished at Calvary. Father, we praise you. We rose again in three days. And after appearing to many, ascended back into heaven, took his rightful righteous place at the right hand of the Father, where he rules and reigns forevermore, Father forevermore. And I declare that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we honor that before you this day, Father God, as we enter your courts, Father God, with thanksgiving and praise. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we welcome your presence. The presence of Ruach Elohim, the spirit of the living God, and the presence of the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, to descend on this place, that the weight of your glory would fall, that the power of your presence would move mightily. Father God, lead and guide me and all wisdom, counsel, might, power, and the reverential fear of the Lord. Fill me, Lord, with your words in Jesus' name, by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God. May only the truth and power of almighty God with authority come forth in Jesus' name. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, every plot scheme, contract, assignment, weaponry, blueprint, attack, slander, harm, or strategy that the enemy, satanic agents, dark forces, unclean spirits, familiar spirits, hosts of the enemy and the like would attempt. In the name of Jesus Christ, I apply the blood of Jesus and command it be broken, canceled, aborted, destroyed, dismantled, disabled, thwarted, disrupted, blocked, their communication lines disrupted, Father God, and interfered with, Lord, so they cannot communicate their plans, Lord, in Jesus' name. Bound up in the name of Jesus Christ and cast back to the pits, the dry place in the areas you have designated, Lord, to be bound there in the name of Jesus Christ and not return or have anything set to this place. Father God, let the voice of the enemy be silenced right now in Jesus' name and muzzled, Father God. Every attack, every unclean spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, let them be muzzled now. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord. Father God, take all the glory for yourself. You are the potter, we are most certainly the clay. You are the author and finisher of our faith, Father God. You are the author and finisher of our faith, Lord. Hashi be new Adonai. Come to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, welcome to everybody coming on. I am in my PJs, Exhibit A, and my faux fuzzy slippers, Exhibit B. And I thank our Ark of Grace team because they set this up for me on the fly. So I can come on with you tonight, but I am fired up about what the hey, hey is going on right now in New York and in these court cases. And I'm going to do a part three on Israel. We have to do a part three. There is so much going on that we have to do a part three of Israel at war. We will get that out as soon as possible. Uh, please pray for our Jewish brothers and sisters. Israel is forever. We stand with them. Please pray for Doobie, who is a dear friend of the Clements. He was their tour guide in Israel. Pray for him and his family right now. We have other friends there. Isaac, we have friends also in parliament. Pray for them, Lord. 
uh, we just ask that the Lord, that you pray for them and that the Lord just delivers them and protects them right now because there's some serious stuff going on that Doobie was talking to me about. Hand-to-hand combat, combat in tunnels going on in Gaza. So please just pray for them, Father. Just bring them to your remembrance, we ask in Jesus' name. Okay, so let's get into now what we need to talk about here which is the circus that they are trying to do in New York, okay? And in the city and in this trial. I do want to say a couple of things before I get into this. Part one, I talked about the dream of of, of President Trump on the golf course. He had a wound on his leg that was being covered up, right? He made a very unconventional shot at the hole. I consulted with a pro golfing instructor Craig, and who Barbara knows, and he said where President Trump lifted his club and ran at the ball and did it on the green the way he did, it is not illegal or a violation, right? It's allowed. It's not the best etiquette, and it's um, it's not the wisest Uh, move on a putting green to when you have one last shot to go full force at the ball, right? But it is allowed, okay? It is allowed. It's just a bit of a, of a unconventional and, and, you know, kind of a, a forceful and aggressive way to make a putt. So I wanted to tell you all that because I told you there would be more information coming out about this. So What is going on in New York? Oh my goodness. I have to tell you why this is so crucial. What is happening in New York and this trial in New York. Okay. That is going on this, this, this civil trial that is going on that the Trumps are in the middle of right now. I have to go over with you some things about New York to get you to understand why we are at a precipice and why this is so crucial and why prayer is so urgent right now. Okay. And then we'll go back into the dream. Okay, part two, we'll go back into the dream. But in 1838, the New York legislator, I believe it was 1838, declares the New York legislator that this is a Christian nation, that others are welcome, there's freedom of religion, but that this is overwhelmingly a Christian nation. They declare it, okay? The Supreme Court also in rulings had declared that before, okay? In 1970, Roe v. Wade gets gasoline poured on it in New York and ignites. 50 years later, which is the Jubilee on the Jewish calendar, remember it takes seven Shemitahs to make a Jubilee. A Shemitah is seven years. Incredible uh, earth-moving events and important events and historic events. Um, And national events tend to happen on Shemitah years. And then you have the Jubilee where there's basically a reversal. Captives are set free. What is stolen has to be given back. All of this. So in early 2020, 50 years after Roe v. Wade, COVID hits, right? And it hits New York, one of the hardest out of all the areas in the nation. New York is ground zero, right? New York is ground zero. One of the worst areas for it was New York, right? And in 1970, in in, in Roe v. Wade, the younger was being harmed, right, with abortion, and the older was being spared. Overwhelmingly with COVID in New York, the young were spared. Kids were okay from it. Kids didn't didn't have an, an issue with it, and the older was not spared. Why? Because it was a reversal of what happened. It was what was stolen in a way being given back to the young. In 2001, you have 9-11. Where does that happen? New York City in the epicenter again, right? Ground zero. 2021 in New York, you have the scandal with Cuomo when he's forced to resign and step down as New York governor. January 26, 2023, that golden horned ishtar looking female statue is placed atop the new york city courthouse and the new york times headline read move over moses and zoraster there's a new female 
lawgiver in town. It was not long after that. And that idol was given to that spirit that the indictments came down. Okay. So we have to understand there is a greater battle happening in New York that the Trumps happen to be in the middle of. There is a greater spiritual battle. There is a greater, there is a greater battle because of judgment that has come on New York, because of scandal that's come on New York. The banking crisis in 2008, right? A good part of these banks, their headquarters was in New York, right? Although some of them were around the country. 2008 was a Shemitah year when the banking crisis happened. It was also the year Obama took office. So New York has been a battleground for territorial spirits for a very long time because it is where they got their blood covenant with abortion. It is where there has been a battle for souls. It is where COVID was hit one of the worst. It is where that disgusting statue now lies. Okay. So this is a greater battle and this is a a, a a precipice of what is happening in New York right now, okay? They happen to be in the middle of it right now, the Trumps. And I'm going to read to you uh, from September 25th, 2023, when the Yom Kippur word was given, I want you to hear these words. This indeed is the hour where the lion's den turns on the thieves and officials who attempted to move those out of the way that would not come into agreements with their covens and thievery, scoundrel behavior, says the Lord, for the scoundrels shall be rounded up, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, watch the Supreme Court in this hour and the judges of the appellate courts, a shrewd maneuver and an emergency injunction, says the Lord, for the righteous shall have to take the wheel and turn the courts, and these cases in the direction I, the Lord, say they should go. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, around the time of what you call Christmas, there shall be a sharp maneuver in the United States government, a very capital sharp maneuver, says the Lord. And there shall be a shakeup, even panic, says the Lord, screaming in the halls of Congress, says the Lord, for January must be rectified, says the Lord, it must be rectified. Thus says the Lord, you shall hear trumpets again, says the Lord, a call for it across your land shall be stirred up once again, for at the Trump, that's capitalized, there shall be a turn, a change in direction. The younger shall advise the older, says the Lord. In the mist, a burning bush, says the Lord, shall emerge. Now, I'm going to stop there for a minute. In the mist, a burning bush shall emerge. This has a double meaning. I'm telling you, it does. This has a double meaning because first of all, the Bush family, okay, and their influence. But secondly, the burning bush, when Moses stood before it, represented Israel being on fire, but never being consumed and destroyed. The bush was on fire, but it was never consumed. Israel was on fire and they were never consumed. So a burning bush has to do with being on fire, but not being destroyed. Okay, so keep that in mind. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, around the time of June, there shall be a historic event in your nation where many shall look in wonder as it takes place for the river of blood through America must be stopped up. It must be damned. There shall be more judgments that cause the income source from such to dry up. Part of Planned Parenthood will attempt to go underground, says the Lord. However, going deeper into the darkness will cut off a main artery and cause a major capital fracturing at the head. And the crack shall run down to their satellite office, says the Lord. I, the Lord thy God, am exonerating in this hour. For my capital righteous judgments have gone forth to acquit those who stand accused, to deliver, to set free. However... 
It shall not be in the same way, says the Lord. It shall not. For a different way is being carved, says the Lord, a different way, an unusual way, a way that I, the Lord thy God, see that many cannot. Ask me for the vision, says the Lord, to see the path I see. And I, the Lord, shall give unto you dreams and visions that you shall see beyond the veil, for you, my children, are seated in heavenly places. Okay, that's the excerpt from, from this word. Now, Barbara today had heard the Supreme Court too about watching the Supreme Court, right? Right now with all of these cases. But this is the hour of the lion's den. This is the hour of the officials who accuse Daniel. Government officials concoct a plan to catch him in something, right? To make something illegal that may not be illegal, right? To catch him serving the Lord when they convince Darius under manipulation to make a law that says it is illegal to worship God. It is illegal to worship anybody but Darius. Idolatry, pride, we could go on with that. So this happens. And they Daniel continues doing what he's doing. He will not stray from the path that the Lord has put him on. And they catch him. And Darius tries to find a way to deliver him. The Lord doesn't allow it because the Lord wants to bring deliverance. The Lord wants his name exalted. The Lord wants Darius to tremble at the error of his ways. So Darius finds no way to overturn that law and deliver Daniel. And Daniel is indeed put in the lion's den where they are licking their chops, right? Waiting to devour. For the enemy roams about like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. In the pit, Daniel calls on the name of the Lord. He doesn't call on anybody else, right? Attorneys can be wonderful. And when they are praying and spirit-filled, right? Which I know at least one of them is around the Trump family. It is a wonderful thing. It is a wonderful gift. However, the word of God says, when you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Not when you call on the name of attorneys, although the Lord may position them to do his work. When you call on the name of the Lord, you shall and will be saved. And so Daniel calls on the name of the Lord. In the midst of everything that wants to devour him, those lions all represented every official that was eagerly waiting to devour and destroy him. And when he calls on the name of the Lord, the Lord shuts the mouth of the lions, shuts them, closes them, and prevents them from harming Daniel at all, even though he's in the pit, even though. He's been judged by the law. He is preserved. And the next day, Darius runs. Darius runs. I'm sorry, honey. We've got to do something here. The next day, Darius runs to the den. And what does he do? He says, roll away the stone. There was a stone put in front of it. Because why? It's an image of a tomb. It's an image of being sent to a tomb. And he goes, roll the stone away. And Daniel is alive. He is alive. And when Darius sees this and realizes how powerful God is, not only is D Darius in fear for himself at that moment, because he allowed himself pridefully be tricked into putting that law out to try to harm a man that shouldn't have been harmed. But Darius takes every government official that did this and throws them into the lion's den instead. And what they sowed, what they sowed, they reaped. And I'm going to say this, and this is a warning. Trying to make a name for yourself off of the destruction of somebody else. Trying to make a name for yourself. Nimrod tried to make a name for himself with Babel. Esau tried to make a name for himself. Haman tried to make a name for himself. 
The officials in Daniel's time tried to make a name for themselves. And when you try to make a name for yourself by the destruction of someone, when your only motivation is to destroy them, to go on a witch hunt, because you greedily want a name for yourself, you want to be the one. Your wage will be paid as it was paid to Nimrod, as it was paid to Goliath, as it was paid to Esau, as it was paid to the government officials in Daniel. Your wage will be paid to you because you are trying to make a name for yourself off of the complete destruction of somebody else when you know and have full well knowledge that others in high seats in the land are taking part in complete corruptness and selling the United States of America piece by piece to the highest foreign bidder. And the reason why they are attempting to put a magnifying glass on this and put the heat on is to completely cover up and take the onus off of and take the attention off of the smoking guns that are coming out on those and their families that sit in the highest seats of the land. And this is why they are putting a microscope and a magnifying glass over this New York trial. Because ultimately, they are trying to take the onus right now off of the smoking guns that are coming out that are showing that the family that currently occupies the highest seat in the land sold the United States off piece by piece to the highest bidder. And that they were the puppets for former presidents. They were the puppets for former presidents. And so we're seeing this because they are literally trying to expand and make a big deal out of something when something else far worse is happening that they would like to cover up. So this is a two-parter. It's a cover-up and I'm going to make a name for myself while I'm covering it up, while I'm looking the other way on crimes that I know is going on. While I'm looking the other way on these things, I'm going to make a name for myself by conquering the one who has the tower. Well, Nimrod attempted to do that. He attempted to build the tower to challenge God and his plans. And what did God do? He confused their languages and scattered them because he had ordered them to scatter amongst the earth and they didn't listen. They defied God and they built that tower. And in the midst of building it to try to defy, the Lord confused their languages, caused them to babble and scattered them. So we have to understand right now that no bank has come forth to testify. And I'm going to tell you something. From a financial perspective, normally, if fraud has been committed with a loan, the bank testifies that fraud was committed. Normally, when you take out a commercial loan, the bank scrutinizes your assets, and I mean scrutinizes them, and puts them under a microscope, and looks at them, and does their own assessment on what you've given them. And based on their own assessment, not yours, not what you think anything's worth, but based on their own assessment, after they have scrutinized it, because commercial loans are far and wide scrutinized more than personal loans, they give the loan when it's been scrutinized. So. Not only does something stink here, but I'm going to say this. When in the lion's den, the one you should be calling on is the name of the Lord God Most High. And I'm not talking about dipping your toe in the pond every now and then when there's an emergency. I'm talking about full submission, calling on the name of the Lord and allowing him to guide the direction that you should be going in. 
That's full on submission. That's full on, Lord, I am calling out to you. I'm giving you everything I am and everything that I have for deliverance. Haman did the same thing. Haman tried to destroy a people and destroy Mordecai because Mordecai would not bow. And Haman wanted to make a name for himself because he was from the line of Amalek. And Nathan built the gallows in the book of Esther and the gallows that he built, he was hung on. The Nazi officers, the gallows that they built in Nuremberg, they themselves fell to that fate. So what has been sowed and what has been tilled in the fields right now, that harvest is coming. And it's coming up for those that want to make a name for themselves by completely destroying others because motive matters to God. Motive matters. It's different if you're seeking justice. But if your motivation is a political excavation in order to try to neuter an opponent, and I don't know how else to put it, motive matters to God. Not saying people are perfect and there are things people should not have done because there's probably plenty that shouldn't have been done. But what I'm saying is, is that motive matters in this case. It matters. And as we see this happening in New York, this battleground for New York, that is the carotid artery to Washington, D.C., we see this turn, what looks like a turn happening in Washington, D.C., and we see this large turn being entered. We see the beginnings of a big turn. And when there's a big turn, everything goes sideways like this for a minute, and then it comes back. So we have to understand that there's way more than meets the eye here, that this is not how it looks under the surface. And I'm going to tell you, judges are a representative of God on this earth. Judges are a representative of God on this earth. They're a judge, right? They're supposed to administer justice. They're supposed to judge righteously, right? They're not supposed to interpret the law, right? Supposed to uphold the law. And judges that want to take the law and weaponize it because their pockets are being filled, because they want to be the one. They want to be king of the hill. They want to make a name for themselves. You know what the Lord's going to do? He's going to pull up their robe. He's going to pull their pants down. And he's going to show everybody what they're really hiding. Because judges in this hour are being scrutinized in the courts of heaven. Judges from, from civil cases to the Supreme Court are being scrutinized in this hour. Because judges are supposed to be a representative of God on earth. In fact, in many courtrooms, above the judge on the wall is what? In God we trust. Really, do you? Because if you really did, you would not be taking the law like a coiling serpent, like pythos, and trying to constrict those and suffocate them in order to completely neutralize an opponent. You wouldn't be doing that. And that spirit of pythos, when it goes out, it wants to constrict. That python, it wants to constrict. In fact, we're going to be doing a teaching on this, the spirit of pythos coming up, that I have been putting together with the Lord. But what does it want to do? It wants to coil and it wants to constrict and it wants to limit when it goes out. And you know what happens? In order to keep it from doing that, it has to be cut off at the head and cut off in the middle to prevent it from doing that. And so you have a spirit of pythos that is operating for a higher ruler of the darkness. It is getting its marching orders from a higher ruler of the darkness. Okay, this is a principality that is doing the bidding. Okay? 
of, of, of higher demonic forces in the kingdom of darkness. So you have that happening right now, trying to constrict, trying to stop, trying to limit, trying to do these things in the middle of everything going on. And I'm going to tell you, when I had that dream, when I had that dream about him on the golf course, about President Trump on the golf course, and about there were, you know, others with me, and he looked a little frazzled, and the Lord showed me that enormous wound under his leg that had started to open up. And with that wound covered up, he ran at the ball. That wound is covered up because he, because it's a cover up in many senses. It's not just, oh, he's, he's covering up something. No, it's that, that wound is opening up more because they are trying to parade his children out in the public in the middle of this trying to parade them, okay, as some sort of trophies. Let's put it that way. And that wound is attempting to be covered so nobody sees, right, how deep this has cut. And he runs at the golf ball with his club in the air, which is, which is allowed, but he's got one shot. He's got one shot on the green to get par for the course or to get an eagle. He's got one shot on the putting green. And normally when you have one shot, you get very strategic and you examine where the ball is. You examine where the hole is. You take your time, you set up and you go. Instead with this one shot, he runs with the club in the air at the ball with the wound on his leg. And doing that with a wound of that size can cause the wound to open up more and can cripple one and prevent them from running the next leg of this race. So what I'm telling you is that that needs prayer right now. That wound needs to be healed. And God has to be allowed, because he's a gentleman, to come in and deal with that wound before it cripples him. Before it cripples him. And at the end of the dream, the ball goes in anyway, but the shot that got it there was very unconventional, slightly reckless, and not the norm for the course. It was a different way. So that needs prayer right now, because that's a deep wound being covered up that is opening up as we speak. And you don't want that to come pouring out and completely stop and cripple someone from continuing to do what God has called them to do. So I encourage you to do that in the midst of this, to pray. Because, and I mean pray. There's a lot of people that say, say oh, I'm praying. No, we really need to pray. Not only for this, but I'm going to say this. We cannot idolize a man. The, the, the problem that has happened is that it has skewed towards idolizing. And this is why this is taking longer, because God will not allow the idolization and compete with man. Man has to be fully submitted to God. And man has to understand that, that we are tools in the hands of God. We are vessels that he fills. We are not God. Far, far from it never will happen. But when idolization happens, processes can take longer. Yes, you want to pray. Yes, we see what's happening in the nation. Yes, we see unprecedented levels of corruptness and seat warmers and what's going on and witch hunts. And, and, and there's about to be a bait and switch that's about to happen in Washington, D.C. And there's about to be a bait and switch that happens with one of these trials. And, and we see this going on and we have to remember that man is fallible. God is omniscient, omnipotent, the alpha and omega. We cannot idolize a man in the middle of this. We should want God's plan, God's plan, God's pick. That's what we should be seeking. God's plan, God's way, God's pick. 
because that is the best way. And that is what the United States needs. And that is what we have to pray for because we can't have somebody crippled from a wound that's being covered up that cannot run the next leg of the race. That needs prayer. So what I'm saying is there have been times where it has skewed towards idolization and we have to pray for the man. Pray for the man. Pray for the man's family. Pray for them. Pray for these judges and DAs and attorney generals that that they get their head on straight and they get their motives right and they repent. Pray for them right now. Pray for those who persecute you. Pray for them. As a family right now, pray for those who are persecuting you. It goes a long way with the Lord. And it brings you to his remembrance. But we have to keep man in his proper place within the scheme of the plans of God. And that has gotten skewed a bit in the middle of this. And our focus cannot be obsessiveness on what is happening. We pray. We pray for the family. We pray for the president. We pray for the man. We pray for that wound. We pray for that shot that's going to be unconventionally and a little recklessly taken. But above all, we seek God and we seek his purposes and we seek his plans. And we cry out for the nation right now, right? A nation that is partially under judgment for the amount of blood that has been shed, for the amount of rainbows that has been twisted. For the amount of bowing to false Hindu gods, right? To bowing to red nations, to bowing to those that want to chant death to Israel, to making deals that should have never been made, making agreements that should have never been made that need to be broken. Right now, this is what the nation is facing. And in the midst of it, the church, the church is not understanding the temperature of the United States and Israel. Didn't they accuse Netanyahu before he came back? Didn't they put him through lawsuits? Didn't they do some similar things to this man? Well, the church has to understand the temperature of the United States and Israel. Israel is the time clock. And part of the church is more worried about the serpent of wokeism and their clock. And more worried about catering to it and bowing to it on one knee and serving it instead of being the conscience that the country so desperately needs right now. Look at what's happening to the colleges right now. Their harvest is coming in as we speak. All the fields they tilled by brainwashing these young kids. All the fields they tilled by making young kids who are Jews forsake their heritage for wokeism. All the fields they tilled with wokeism, transgenderism, twisted rainbows, liberal hate corruption, anger, inability for young kids to cope with anything bad that happens. All these fields they tilled and they sowed. The seeds have now come up and they are facing a very large field of tares. Nothing but tares. And they forget that some of the largest corporations in the nation are run by Jews who are now seeing what they have done and seeing these protests on campus and seeing the anti-Semitism and that these kids have been totally brainwashed and now their donors are pulling out. Nobody wants to give these kids jobs. They want them blacklisted. 
because now all that has been tilled has come to harvest. And all of those seeds now have grown tares and have grown up young kids that have no spiritual or moral compass for what is going on in the world none no spiritual no moral compass not understanding the temperature of what's going on and not really digging to understand it just believing what they are spoon fed and now these major colleges that thought they were getting away with something that thought they were getting money hand over fist that thought all of this stuff they were doing was just going to earn them a nice little crop has earned them a field of tares this is their portion in this hour this is their harvest it has come and these young kids these jewish kids that once forsook their heritage. In this hour, the scales shall fall from their eyes and they shall see and their heart of stone shall turn to a heart of flesh and a gentle, humble spirit shall come forth out of these kids and they shall see that their heritage is what they are, is who they are, that they are the apple of God's eye. They are his chosen people. We are adopted as Christians engrafted into that covenant and they're going to see this in this hour because god is calling out to them to come back to their shepherd to come back to their heritage to come back and accept the birthright that they forsook to come back take hold of that birthright and stand in the lord for the identity that they are, for the covenant that they have, and that they will call on the name of Yeshua in this hour on these college campuses. The name of the Yeshua is going to break out on these campuses in the midst of hate, in the midst of anger, in the midst of protests that are spewing the venom of pythos, that are spewing the venom of Leviathan that are spewing the venom of those that serve their father, the devil. In this hour, they shall receive their portion for spewing that and for causing the younger ones to sin. But they will come back to their heritage in this hour. They will. There is going to be a turn and a tidal wave that is now crested, it's crested above these colleges. The shadow of it has eclipsed these colleges and it's about to come down. It's about to come down. And I'm telling you, one of them is going to file for bankruptcy because of what they have done. The devourer has devoured now them. Their field and harvest of tares is here. And those right now in the judicial system that are tilling the fields, that are tilling the soil, that have planted all of these seeds of hate, destruction, cover-ups, lies, fabrications, mockery, all of these seeds that have been dropped everywhere soon and very soon will come to harvest. Why? Because that crop is accelerating. You know why? Because they mutated it. It is a mutated crop that is coming to the judicial system. And this mutation is going to plague them in the judicial system and the judicial branch. That branch is diseased. That branch must be pruned. And the Lord thy God is going to prune that branch for it has fostered a lot of injustice in the midst of an hour of justice. And that injustice that has now been fostered, the Lord from his court is going to right that wrong. The Lord from his court is going to enter the judgments. The Lord from his court is going to act. However, the people perish for lack of knowledge. People of the church 
do not perish for lack of knowledge in this hour. You should know the timetable. You should know that as Israel goes, so goes America. You should know this. Seeing these attacks, they are trying to put under a microscope about loans in New York when certain departments of the government are concerned about Hamas cells in this nation. And I'm telling you, the Dakotas, Michigan, New Mexico, Arizona, watch them. Kansas, watch Kansas in this hour. That just flew out of my mouth. Praise the Lord. But that injustice gets corrected when the people decide they're not going to perish for lack of knowledge. Humble themselves before God. Repent. Seek his face. Turn from their wicked ways. Then he hears from heaven, forgives their sin, and heals their land. The sin has to be forgiven and the high places have to come down. And this is happening in New York again because New York is a crucial piece of territory for the kingdom of darkness. It is. This is why this is happening in New York right now during this time, right after the high holy days, going into the end of the year. And I've said this before, to watch for around the time of November 28th. It could be two weeks after. It could be a week before. But watch for around that time. Watch for this Christmas chair, the dream I had in Martha's Vineyard with Carolyn Bissett Kennedy there and this birth and announcement and this Christmas chair they wanted to fill. Watch. Because there is a reason. They want to put so much onus in New York right now to cover up things going on in the rest of the nation. There is a reason they want to put this in an incubator and mutate it into a beast that should never be because they can't control the beast. They are under the control of the beast. Their flesh and the enemy enticing them to take a bite because they will make a name for themselves and they will become like God, knowing good from evil. That is a poisonous bite they have taken. A poisonous bite. And the New York government for this and the New York leadership in 2024 is going to suffer a serious blow for this because God has not forgotten that the New York state legislator in 1838 deemed this a Christian nation. God hasn't forgotten. And that has to come back before the courts. That has to come back now and be dealt with because New York as a whole is crucial right now to the nation. It is crucial. It is a battleground. And those words that were echoed in New York and put into the atmosphere and the soil of New York, this is a Christian nation. That has not been forgotten. And because of that, New York leadership, it's coming that a major, major strike is going to be to their agenda, to who they want in office, to their plans, to their purposes. They're, they think someone's going to make a comeback. Oh, they think. Nope. Instead, there's going to be a setback and one brought to the forefront. And I'm telling you, the weight of conviction is falling upon the New York City mayor right now. The weight of conviction is falling upon the New York City mayor. That weight and that millstone is there. And those in the lion's den right now, I plead with you 
Don't just stick your toe in. Don't just test the waters with God. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit to God. A. Then you resist. And then because of that, the devil must flee to you from you. Because when you submit to God, you come under a covering. When you just dip your toe in and test the waters, you are going out from under that covering. You are going out to be vulnerable for the enemy. No more just dipping your toe in when you feel like it. No more just testing it. No more just listening when you feel like. Full submission under the yoke is what is required. God is no respecter of persons. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He required it of Daniel. He required it of Hezekiah. He required it of David. He required it of Joshua. He required it of Moses. He required it of Jacob. He required it. It is a requirement. It is not up for debate. And when you keep testing, you give the enemy more time to come up more with more attacks and more ways to ensnare you and chain you even more and plunge that chain into the soil and prevent you from moving forward. This is full on submission for deliverance from the den of lions. And the Lord knows who will ultimately submit. So sometimes he will protect someone that's not fully there yet because he knows that full submission is coming. The Holy Spirit is waiting. He is waiting to be let in. He is waiting to be fully let in right now in the middle of what you're going through. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open, I will come in and sup with him. Knock, knock. This is the Lord. This is your chance. This is the time. This is the hour. And why do I say these things? Because there's some things the Lord shows me and I cannot talk about publicly. There are some dreams I have. I'm sorry. I cannot talk about publicly. But there are times the Lord will permit me to speak of something publicly. This dream was one of them. One of the times where I was permitted. It's funny in the middle of this, the banks aren't showing up to the trial. The banks don't seem to be coming to testify. The ones who loan the money don't seem to be anywhere to be found. At the core, this is about money. And the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. At its core, this is one of the cruxes here. The love of money, the desire to be known. It is not about justice when you cherry pick it. When you cherry pick justice, you are not doing your job as a servant of the people. And there's cherry picking going on. A lot of it. You have a lot of cherry pickers out there right now. And I'm going to say this too. God requires the meat in order for this next leg of the race. He does. He requires it. And sometimes there are people that put things in the chat that are very immature. Like, well, this one said this first. I'm not, and I'm going to say this as plainly as I can. I'm not getting into a pissing match. I won't tolerate it. Because the meat is required in this hour. And if you always want the milk, if you always want the milk, and you want something soothing all the time that you want to hear to appease your flesh, well, if that's what you're listening to, run from them. Because right now you need the meat and you need your flesh to get good and uncomfortable to grow. Right now, this family, they need the milk and the meat right now. Because that wound must be healed because it's being covered up. 
And that wound is going to get exposed. But we pray it is healed enough by the time it does in Jesus' name. Because that will cripple a man. That will cripple a man. And parading their children like trophies to be fodder for a thirsty for destruction media will cripple a man. So pray. Pray right now. Because Haman wanted the name and wanted to destroy a people and exterminate them. Right now, we see that going on in Israel, and we see this with certain things happening in the United States of America. Haman wanted a name. Goliath wanted a name. Nimrod wanted a name. The officials in the book of Daniel wanted a name. A name they were given, but not the name they sought. The name they were given was of shame, humiliation, defeat, a laughing stock, a heifer. So they sought a name, but they ultimately ended up with the antithesis of the name they sought because they sought it in their flesh and they sought it to defy God and they sought it out of their own glory to be lifted up and glorified for themselves. It's no mistake that that female gold statue was put to stop the New York City courthouse before this happened. No mistake that the enemy would use enchantresses to do this. But they ultimately get bound by their own spells. They ultimately fall victim to their own spells. And that is the danger of the road of perdition that the cobblestones are being laid for in this. This road of perdition, road of destruction, cobblestone by cobblestone, they're laying it, thinking it's a road of glory. And it's not. I'm not saying people are perfect. Far from it. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all do things we shouldn't do. Just many of us don't have them paraded publicly out in the open. And we have to remember where mercy is shown, mercy is given. I can't even bring myself to let a bee die in my swimming pool because I got to run and fish it out. You know why? Because it's always in the back of my mind. Where mercy is shown, mercy is given. Where mercy is shown, mercy is given. It's always in the back of my mind. I always want the Lord to see that I showed mercy to what was the lesser. You see, I showed mercy to in a situation that I could have just overlooked and not cared because it didn't have to do with me. Where mercy is shown, mercy is given. And the officials that want to go about this in this way will be given their wage in full by God and their portion and their cup of iniquity that they drink. But I'm going to tell you something. The Lord is allowing this. This is the Job moment. Are you going to curse God? Or are you going to serve him? This is the Job moment. What are you going to do when it comes down to it? Are you going to curse him? Or are you going to serve him? Because God is allowing some things here. In order to strip away some things. To cause men to run to him right now. To cling to him. He can restore everything that's being taken. He's allowing it to strip it down a bit. To cause men to see they are weak. 
but in God, they are strong. He is causing that right now. All of this being stripped down and, 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 and whittled down all of it to show and allow the weakness so they can run to God and have his strength demonstrated in the midst of it. It's a humbling that has to happen. And we have to remember God is allowing this for reason. We just have to pray that we have the vision to see why and to see what God is driving in the midst of this. Who is he trying to drive and in what direction? Sometimes God will allow things to get good and uncomfortable for men and them to be stripped of things they have built in order to push them in a direction he really needs them to go. And he restores it to them. Process of restoration is two parts. The old must be torn down first. Ripped down to the studs. Everything God doesn't want. Everything that needs to be taken out of your life. Everything down to the studs. So he can go, now let's rebuild it the way it should be built. Now let's build this the way it should be built. And then he restores it. And he restores it so much better. The anointing of God will cost you everything. But you will get back so much more than you ever gave up. Understand this right now, you who are going through this. You will get back so much more than you ever gave up, than you ever lost. If you just surrender it all to God, put it before his throne and give it all over to him in this hour. It requires it right now. Daniel did that. This is the hour that it requires. So pray, pray. Sincerely pray for all involved. Pray for their children right now. Because this is all on tape. This is all on video. And this is painful for kids. Pray for them. Pray for the marriages. Pray for the marriages right now. Of uh, President Trump and his children. And pray that the scales of justice that have been skewed are by an act of God put back to center. By an act of God restored to what it should be. By an act of God, the courts are cleansed and restored to bring true justice in a situation and true fairness and true objectiveness in a situation because this requires being wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove, which means deceive the deceiver. Legal team, legal team, wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, deceive the deceiver. And you will get your smoking guns. You will have opportunities and documents show up and miraculous puzzle pieces that you have been scrambling and searching for. You will have that happen. But everybody as a whole has to come out of agreement with, with the anger and offense of what they're doing to them. One of the best things you can do when somebody wrongs you is loose that offense from your soul, <clears throat> turn them over to the Lord and move on with your life. And right now, all that offense they feel because of what they're being put through publicly, they need to loose it from their soul turn it over to God and march forth with him leading them fully and assuredly in this. That's what needs to happen. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm getting all hot over here.
in the middle of this, but we're at an hour and five minutes already. So I, I want to, I don't want to have this go too long. Um, but David strengthened himself in the Lord. When something would happen, when he would get chased by Saul, when the Amalekites raided his camp and the, and took their families and the men were talking about stoning David he strengthened and encouraged himself in the Lord. He took the time to do that. And he was brought out victorious. So we have to pray for God's way in this, God's will, in the direction God wants, in the way he wants, because we can't go the same way we went before. There's got to be a new avenue carved out. A new avenue carved out for, for next year, meaning it can't be the same avenue that was went before. There has to be a new way gone in this. So remember that. So God bless everyone. Keep the faith. We love you. Armor up according to Ephesians chapter 6, Psalm 91. Say it every single day. It takes two to three minutes. So powerful. So powerful. Legal team, Psalm 91, every day when you get up, start with that. Start your meetings with that. Start your strategizing with that right now. Psalm 91, armor up according to Ephesians chapter six. I encourage you to say the Lord's prayer. The order to that prayer is what's so important. Get yourself in the habit of praying in that order. Um, very, very important. And keep the faith, keep the faith. Seek his face, not his hand. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Seek his face. Seek his face above all. He gets all the glory in this, all of it. We are just tools, and that is all we are, that are utilized for the glory of God to be glorified in the earth. God bless everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. We will announce when we're coming back on. We've got Israel part three. Israel at War Part 3 coming. We have that teaching on Pythos coming and anything else the Lord gives me in between, I will most certainly put it out. So have a wonderful evening, everyone. Hello, everyone. Amanda Grace here. So as many of you know, Dr. Mark Sherwood and Dr. Michelle Sherwood of the Functional Medical Institute are mine and Chris's doctors. And so I went to Dr. Sherwood with a problem that I was seeing, not only with, with what I was going through, but with what other women were going through concerning their metabolism, concerning energy, concerning their hormones. And so we put our heads together and we are very happy now to finally be able to present to you Rafa for women. Rafa means healer in Hebrew. So it is an ode to the Lord because he is our healer. He put things in the earth that help heal us. And so Rafa is a product that was created for that. It also helps by helping with a healthy metabolism and natural hormones, as well as it helps balance fatigue. It helps with weight gain, night sweats, mood swings, blood sugar issues, and more. It is all natural. And I find more and more people are going into the natural arena in order to find solutions to issues that they're going through. So if you'd like to learn more, you can go to www.arcofgrace.org forward slash ministry dash partners to learn more about Rafa today. God bless. Hey everyone, Amanda Grace here. If you are looking for advice on financial matters, if you think gold and silver might be right for you, go to bh-pm.com today. Andrew Sorcini of Beverly Hills Precious Metals, who has been on Ark of Grace many times and loves to answer our viewer questions, is here with his team to answer all of your gold and silver needs. Whether you want to buy gold and silver, whether you have questions to see if it's right for you, whether you are looking to roll over retirement accounts. Go to bh-pm.com today and Andrew and his team will be more than happy to assist you with all of your needs. 
If you want to support an amazing patriot and be a blessing, go to MyPillow.com today and use promo code ARK, A-R-K, to save up to 66% or more off of all MyPillow products. They have pillows, of course, but they are so much more than pillows. They have sheets. They have slippers. They have bathrobes. They even have dog beds. And a fun fact for all of you, Noble, one of our pigs at our animal sanctuary, has indeed slept on a MyPillow dog bed. So if you want to be a blessing, you can go to MyPillow.com today and use promo code ARC. It is an alternative to big pharma based on quantum physics, over 40 scripture verses written into these patches for everything from blood sugar, anxiety, pain, neuropathy, to immune system boost, dog pain. They are very sincere about um, having alternatives to big pharma. We are a big advocate of natural solutions to help with pain and, and, and blood sugar and a host of other issues. I yeah. tried the pain patches and, yeah. and they worked when I used them. When you connect it to your body, the skin patch changes changes your brain waves. Sugar, this one is neuropathy. I actually have it on. And we use this on Toby, actually, because Toby's about eight years old. And from being paralyzed years ago and the Lord miraculously healing him, he has a little leftover with his joints and his hips. So we actually give him the doggy pain patches. What was he doing? He was running? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I walked him out and wow he's boom and he got power i said no way and i don't know i said amanda what what did you do to him to <laughs> <laughs> so it's good